Uh, today, we will start uh, structural equation modeling uh, part 1 that is measurement model ACM that is structural equation modeling measurement model. measurement model. Now, let me see the content of today's presentation that will start with conceptual model, then the assumptions of the model, then how to estimate the model parameters and model adequacy test followed by a case study. You see uh, in last class I have explained that major structural equation modeling has two component one is measurement measurement another one is structural component the measurement component is essentially a confirmatory factor analysis confirmatory factor analysis and structural part or we can say the structural model is is equivalent to your path model or path analysis. Both the model the measurement measurement as well as structural part uh, there are very three important steps one is model identification then parameter estimation and model adequacy test model adequacy test this is true for structural part also in this lecture we will consider the measurement part which is confirmatory factor analysis so let us start with a conceptual model first you see here uh, in last class I have shown you similar diagram and uh, you see there are three factors j 1, j 2 and j 3 and each of the factors are manifested by uh, different variables starting from x 1, x 2, x 3 for j 1, x 4 and x 5 for j 2 and x 6, x 7, x 8 for j 3. So, in confirmatory factor analysis the basis is that that there are hidden constructs which are this or latent construct other way we can say hidden variable also that j 1, j 2, j 3 which are the causes of some manifest variables like x 1, x 2, x 3 to x 8 by putting this arrowhead for example, from j 1 to x 1, j 1 to x 2 and j 1 to x 3, uh, we are restricting uh, the model here in such a sense that we know that j 1 is manifested by x 1, x 2 and x 3, this manifest variable. Similarly, j 2 is manifested by x 4 and x 5. Similarly, j 3 is manifested by x 6, x 7 and x 8. Another issue here that these hidden construct or latent construct or latent variables they co vary in the sense that that if j 1 change there may be a change of j 2 there may be change of j 3 when the correlation component is there. So, this type of <coughs> this is a uh, typical structure of confirmatory factor model and other issues here apart from this correlation between the constructs which is denoted by phi this one phi 2 1 this is phi 3 1 this curve, curve line this curvature curvature line is basically phi 3 2. Now, well, we are saying x 1 is caused by j 1 and as a result a causal linkage is given j 1 to x 1 
and the parameter which basically depicting the relationship between j 1 and x 1 is lambda 1 1. Uh, earlier I also told you this lambda 1 1 this 1 1 this suffix comes that x 1 from x 1 this 1 is taken and j 1 1 is taken. Okay. So, it is not possible that the variability of x 1 will be fully explained by j 1. So, there is possibility of some other variables or, or hidden causes which may which may affect x 1 or we can say the errors part noise part and all those things are considered by delta 1. So, in the same manner you have to explain x 1, x 2, x 3 and up to x 8. What I said verbally this is depicted here in equation form. We are saying x 1 is, is represented by lambda 1 1 j 1 plus delta 1 if you think from the regression line point of view you will be getting this equation. Okay. So, in the same manner there are uh, as there are 8, 8 x variables. So, you are getting 8 linear equations and collectively if you write in matrix form then that will be x 8 cross 1 equal to that capital lambda which is a matrix uh, of the dimension 8 cross 3 and which you can see here 8 cross 3 dimensions here because j 1, j 2, j 3 that 3 and 8 x variable this 8 plus this j plus delta this one. So, this is the this is the matrix form equation for this particular example. Now, we can go for a general equation from there that means, what I mean to say here that the general equation will be a x p cross 1 where we are saying there are p number of manifest variables and which can be represented by this manner that lambda which is a matrix of matrix relating p manifest variable to m factors and this m factors are denoted by like this m cross 1 and definitely for every manifest variable there will be an error. So, this is the equation for confirmatory factor model and in fact, if you see the uh, recall that um, exploratory factor analysis you have found out there also similar relationship, but there are there is difference okay, difference in the structure of the model in the model assumption in the covariance structure. So, what are the assumptions here? we assume that the expected value of delta equal to 0 that mean the the noise variable the error terms that mean is 0 and covariance of delta this one is your theta or you can write theta delta also sometimes theta or theta delta and it is symmetric it is symmetric. Okay. So, if I say like this this will be p cross p so, this this will be the variance component of delta of diagonal will be the covariance and they will be equal that is why the symmetric and delta is multivariate normal with mean 0 and covariance matrix theta delta or you can write theta also. Okay. Another important issue here is that the assumption is that covariance between j the manifest uh, sorry the latent construct and the error terms related to the manifest variable they are 0. Okay. So, this is our uh, your assumptions related to confirmatory factor model. Now, there are as I told you there are covariance structure. So, the covariance structure of uh, your CFA covariance structure first one is covariance of x this will be capital sigma p cross p. There will be covariance structure for the j latent construct 
this one will be phi which is again m cross m matrix diagonal I, not diagonal this is symmetric matrix. Then covariance of delta which we say theta p p okay. it is mostly assumed as diagonal matrix okay. assumed as diagonal. not necessarily always it will be diagonal, but it is assumed like this. So, you have seen earlier in your exploratory factor analysis also we have written x equal to uh, the delta j i plus I think here uh, lambda j i plus delta this is capital lambda j i plus delta. Now, if you if you find out the covariance of x then ultimately what you will be finding out it will be you will be finding out something like this plus covariance of this delta this is theta in x and this phi was not there in explosory factor analysis it was i phi if phi equal to i then it is orthogonal orthogonal factor analysis okay so this is in nutshell the uh, that covariance structure and the relationship between this okay so now let us uh, stick to come to the model identification part what I mean to say here by model identification, if you clearly look into the model and the parameters that to be estimated as well as the information what is available, there must be sufficient necessity and sufficiency of the information available to estimate the parameters of the confirmatory factor model. Okay. So, in order to do so, do so now let us find out that what are the parameters we require to be estimated. If you see this slide you see that we have few parameters to be estimated for from in, in CFA one is your lambda capital lambda which is P cross M matrix. So, these many parameters to be estimated there is phi which is also a p cross p matrix which is p cross p matrix, but being symmetric it has uh, phi is m cross m matrix I am sorry phi is m cross m matrix which is which is symmetric matrix. So, number of parameters will be m into m plus 1 by 2 to be estimated and then there is theta delta as I told you that theta delta uh, what is this this theta delta I am this is delta this is theta delta. Okay. So, theta delta or theta. So, there if we assume that it is diagonal then there will be p number of parameters to be estimated. So, we require to estimate capital lambda, we require to estimate phi, we require to estimate theta delta. Here in case of capital lambda p cross m this number of parameters phi m into m plus 1 by 2 this number of parameters theta delta p number of parameters are there. So, then in total the number of parameters to be estimated number of parameter to be estimated we can write p m plus m into m plus 1 by 2 plus p. Okay. Now, what do you require to know that if t suppose t equal to 50 
if you require to estimate p 50 parameters and you require at least 50 simultaneous equations getting me. So, now <coughs> what information we have in case of confirmatory factor analysis we have only one information that is capital sigma which is the variance covariance matrix of x that is covariance matrix of x. Now, how many unique or non redundant uh, elements that this is also a symmetric matrix. So, it has number of non redundant element equals to p into p plus 1 by 2. Now, see this what type of situation will occur we require to estimate t number of parameters. It may so happen that number of parameter to be estimated is greater than number of independent non redundant elements in p that is the available information. It may so happen that t equal to p into p plus 1 by 2, it may so happen that t less than p into p plus 1 by 2. Now, the first case this is model cannot be identified, this is model is unidentified or under identified, unidentified. This case number of parameters or number of unknowns and knowns are equal, this is uniquely identified case. and this case this is over identified because we have more information available over identified case. So, at least these two are necessary if you have this case type of situation which is uniquely estimated if you have this this over estimation and that is the desirable one over estimation is the desirable one. This condition particularly these two if these two conditions are either of the two is satisfying you are saying that necessary condition is satisfied necessary condition which is also known as order condition. Okay. But order condition alone is not sufficient this is necessary condition necessity is satisfied there is another condition called rank condition because the you, you will see that we are we are basically talking about the matrices. So, the rank condition rank combinant matrix is important issue here and it is a little bit complicated one also. So, rank conditions also parallel you have to satisfy then that rank condition is not is in the sufficient condition and for example, is given that will in 1973 that is the reference. So, you can now, now order conditions satisfy the necessity and rank condition satisfy the sufficiency. Let us assume that it is done in the sense model is identified. If model is identified the next step is how to estimate the model. So, estimation of model parameters. Okay. So, you have seen that we assume that ultimately that x the manifest variable is normally distributed it is definitely multivariate normal p x variable p p number of variables are there multivariate normal with mean 0 and variance covariance matrix sigma capital sigma. Then for any any observation multivariate observation x i you can write that this is the p d f can be written like this 2 pi to the power p by 2 sigma determinant to the power half e to the power minus half then 
x minus mu we used to write that is x i minus mu is 0 here. So, x i minus mu transpose that means x i transpose f sigma inverse x i. This is the multivariate normal distribution probability density function for a particular multivariate observations. Now, you collect n observations i equal to 1 to n. We want to know the log first the likelihood. So, likelihood if you see this equation you find you see that there is only one parameter which is sigma and mu is 0. So, only one parameter is there there. So, we can write log of uh, likelihood of likelihood of sigma not log likelihood of sigma which can be written as multiplication of this i equal to 1 to n f x i which will be multiplying i equal to x equal to x 1 x 2 up to x n. Then the resultant will be like this 1 by 2 pi to the power n p by 2 then determinant to the power n by 2 then e to the power minus half then sum i equal to 1 to n then x i transpose sigma inverse x i that is what will be the likelihood. And it is customary to take log likelihood. So, if you take log likelihood then what you get you get minus n p by 2 log 2 pi for for here for this term minus n by 2 log this for this term minus half i equal to sum of i equal to 1 to n x i transpose in uh, sigma inverse x i. So, obviously, this from our we want to estimate this sigma uh, that parameters it will be it will be a will go for some optimization route and there this constant term in the equation has whether you add keep it or do not keep it this is immaterial. So, we will remove this constant term. So, we can write this as minus n by 2 log of this plus half of uh, I can write like this minus n by 2 into this minus. So, minus half of this x i transpose this x i. Okay. So, let me write a phrase that log of L the sigma equal to minus n by 2 log determinant sigma minus half x i transpose sigma inverse x i. Now, this term can be written like this minus n by 2 log this minus if I write n by 2 then summation i equal to 1 to n this can be written like this this can be written like this 1 by n I am taking because I have considered n here. So, this one can be written like this okay, right again you write like this write this then I will come to other form n by 2 this minus n by 2 we can write this quantity as stray 1 by uh, sorry let it be 1 by stress of 1 by n x i transpose x i sigma inverse this this is possible. Hmm. Now, 1 by n x i transpose x i this is nothing but variance covariance matrix of the sample provided n is large 1 by n minus 1 and 1 by n will become same. So, okay, with modification we can write like this minus n by 2 then this is trace of s 
sigma inverse. This one is minus n by 2 log of this plus stress of is sigma inverse. Okay. So, this is your log likelihood. Now, see what is the condition here in our estimation here actually this procedure is like this u will be from the model from the model covariance of x uh, your lambda phi lambda transpose plus theta delta from this you will get get covariance of x sigma that is sigma in terms of model parameter you collect sample then you get uh, the covariance matrix also. So, from sample there will be s s is the again p cross q that sample covariance matrix is there. What do you want to do? We want to match these two these two. Suppose a condition is such that s is equal to sigma then if I put here what I can write log, log of l of s this can be written like this this log of s determinant of s plus trace of s s inverse. Now, s s inverse is i s s inverse is i. So, you can write like this this log of s plus sum of the diagonal elements of the matrix i that is p. Okay. So, this is your equation number 1. Now, another one is we have already seen the likelihood one this equal to minus n by 2 log of this plus trace of this this is our equation 2. So, what we want we want to find out parameters now this th this th sigma this will be in terms of model parameters here and here in when we are talking about s it is basically the numerical values and here it is in terms of model parameters like lambda phi and all those things. So, we will create a function now that we want to minimize that we are saying f theta which is nothing but s minus sigma theta of this nature which I am saying not exactly equal to which will be of this nature. So, then we can write like this f theta equal to log of L s minus log of L sigma which if you write this is minus n by 2 log of determinant of s plus p plus n by 2 log of determinant of sigma plus trace of s this trace of s sigma inverse. So, this one you can write minus that n by 2 then log of determinant of sigma plus trace of s sigma inverse minus log of s determinant s minus p. We want to minimize this function. So, keeping this constant n by 2 again is of no use. So, final equation will be for our estimation is this log of determinant of sigma plus trace of s sigma inverse minus log of s minus p. This is the equation which we want to minimize. Okay. So, it is a nonlinear issue you have to use Newton Raphson or similar method Newton Raphson or similar method of numerical that optimization cut. Okay. So, this is what is in the nutshell the parameter estimation in case of confirmatory factor analysis which is basically our measurement model and you see here 
this is the f theta log sigma theta stress of this this is the case ignoring the constant. So, ultimately minimize this one using Newton Raphson or Gauss algorithms. Okay. So, now let us see that whatever mathematics we have described now can it be uh, put into a case study as a real life uh, example. I will show you the example here which I have um, shown you earlier also in the in last class in the first class of structural equation modeling I have shown this one, but there what I have done actually uh, I have given you a glimpse of these things just like scrolling down uh, the uh, slides because just to give you the glimpse uh, of what is this. Now, I will, will, will describe in detail that what is this um, measurement model and with the uh, same case study. Okay. So, the case study as you know it is the role of personal and socio technical factors in work injuries in mines and a study based on employees perception and you can see that the source is Paul and Mighty 2008 uh, it is published in ergonomics. Okay. Uh, so, let us uh, start with like this that we have several manifest variables here there are 18 manifest variable for example, age, experience, impulsivity, negative effectivity, depression, risk taking, safety training, safety practice, safety equipment availability of maintenance, job stress like this. You are wondering that how we are I am saying these are manifest variable although uh, most of the things are uh, now cannot be observed. So, actually what happened for every of the variable we ask several questions and then those questions are summed into a particular quantity and then that that summed up values we have taken as as the value for each of the um, variable for each of the observations or individuals who, who participated in the study. So, in that sense it is uh, it is manifest variable means object variables in that sense otherwise it is a two, two layers one layer questions actually the it was like this one layer all questions then they are summed to this uh, this manifest variables what we are saying they are summed and then then further level of further level of aggregation actually suppose there are question 1 2 question let it be 150. Then there are uh, manifest variable like j 1 there are like 18. Then these are again again it is aggregated into um, what I can say uh, these are x 1 sorry these are x 1 to x x then aggregated to j 1 to some j let it be j 9. So, this level of aggregation is done here. Okay. So, we are taking in this level aggregation we are all considering here it is a manifest variable, but you may start from here to here absolutely, but that will be cumbersome we have avoided this. So, the same thing if you write in the um, confirmatory factor analysis form it, it will be it will be something like this you see all the this uh, that covariance structure between this 9 zeta uh, jai variables it is not uh, pictorially shown because of space constraint, but other way this is the issue. Okay. And then what will happen we will immediately you can go for uh, the equations also for for this you are getting me. So, li uh, like like uh, I am giving one equation only here if I want to know what is x 1 then this is nothing but I can write lambda 1 1 j 1 plus delta 1. If you consider this, so here lambda 1 1 j 1 plus delta 1. Similarly, this one lambda 2 1 j 1 plus, so x 2 will be lambda 2 1 j 1 plus delta 2. If you consider x 3, come back to this again x 3. So, x 3 is ultimately you just see it is uh, it is the single indicator manifest variable for the constructs j 2. So, x 3 can be written like this also that 3 2 j 2 plus delta 3. So, in the same manner 
like there are x 18. So, you will be able to write x 18 come to this one x 18 is again a single indicator for j 9. So, this is your lambda 18 9 j 9 plus delta 18. Okay. So, you can write in matrix form mm, when you write in matrix form you will be getting um, getting a uh, equation in matrix form equation will be we said x equal to lambda j plus delta this equation you can find out here here we have 18 cross 1 this will also be 18 cross 1 this is our what is 9 cross 1. So, this will be 18 cross 9. So, this type of equation you can find out. Okay. Now, let us see the model identification for this case. Okay. Uh, you just see that lambda part that how many comp how many lambda are there you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So, 18 lambdas. So, we have written lambda 18 because others are 0. For example, uh, lambda 3 1 if you give one linkage here that lambda 3 1 that is 0 because it is a confirmatory we know what are the manifest variable coming out of the hidden constructs. Phi, there are how many x? 18 x. So, hmm, how many j? 9 j's. So, m into m cross m into m plus 1 by 2, m into m plus 1 by 2. So, 9 into 10 by 2 that will be 45. So, you have lambda that is your 18, then your phi related variables will be. 45, phi related parameters will be 45, theta delta again 80 delta 1 to delta 18. So, our t is 18 plus 45 plus 18 that is 81. Now, what is the unique elements there? We have 18 manifest variable cross 18. So, 18 into 19 by 2 this will be 171. Now, t equal to 81, it is much less than 171, the model is over identified. Model is over identified, it is a good case, it is a good case. Okay. So, and necessity con uh, condition is satisfied and sufficiency we have not tested here that sets, but it should the softwares they test all those things. Now, let us see that data part. The data part they are actually random independent sampling first we have taken accident group of workers followed by with frequency matching non accident group of workers there are all together 300 observations. So, immediately as I, as I told as I told you that uh, how many independent uh, non redundant element in in your sigma matrix this is the case this is from sample these are all correlation matrix now question what do we want we want basically to minimize this function and in this matrix is basically for s that is sample covariance matrix, but actually we have taken correlation. Now, question comes whether covariance or correlation. It all depends on the purpose of the study. In our purpose of the study, we are more interested in the pattern of the relationship rather than the original uh, strength of relationship between uh, latent variable and, con and your manifest variable. We are more interested in the pattern of the relationships and it, hmm, not the original value. So, when you are interested in the pattern of relationship R is a very good um, R matrix should be used that is correlation matrix should be used. Okay. Now, 
true definitely it is f theta is this is the function which is to be minimized and we have used least real software in this case least real linear structural relations okay least real linear structural relation okay so this software we used and ultimately this is what is the all the parameters which is estimated you can see if you go back at lambda 1 1 lambda 2 1 lambda 3 2 lambda 4 3 like this and you see that lambda 3 2 what is the value of lambda 3 2 here lambda 3 2 is 1 because this one indicator with one constant we assume that this is the this manifest variable itself is the construct one variable was there understood so what will be the what is the output of this measurement model see ultimately we are talking about long back i think this one these things when we have clubbed into these factors, these are all factors or constructs, let and construct this j 1 to j 9, these are not arbitrary j 1 to j 9, they, they have some meaning. Actually, x 1, x 2, if you see that age and experience, then demographics, this is the this is j 1. Impulsivity, negativity, all four are clubbed together, and the j two value actually uh, that negative personality is given here. I think it is j three. Okay. X one, x two, x three, x three is work injury. X three is work injury. It is it is it is it we kept it is as it is work x three. J 3 is you see that negative personality, then J 4 is your safety environment and again J 5 is job stress, J 6 is social support, J 7 is job dissatisfaction, J 8 is work hazard, J 9 is safe work behavior. So, these are all latent variables in that sense. Now, we also want to know the correlation matrix between the latent variables which will be the output of this uh, measurement model. You see that demographic work injury negative personality these are the latent constant and this is your correlation matrix. In and there are little star is there this star indicates 0 0.0, 0 0.05 probability level of significance. I think all are significant here except this value 0 0.04, 0 0.01 some are not significant, but is significant. Essentially, we are interested from measurement model to know that what is the correlation matrix of the latent constructs or factors what we are going to um, evaluate or estimate. Getting me? That is what we have done, and we have done this with the help of this this lambda values and the j and the error terms you are getting this values and this is will be this is a very one uh, this is very very important one because this will be used in structural model as input to structural model in structural equation modeling i told you that structural equation modeling two parts acm has two parts measurement model and structural model the output of this will be input to this ok. Fine, but would I consider the structural uh, measurement model would I consider the measurement model as a fit or not. So, if the model is not fit if it is not adequate enough then the correlation matrix between the constructs is generated they are not good also we have we have doubt about the about those uh, about those correlation values we cannot um, abruptly accept this one now in model adequacy test in last class also i told you that fit index there are three types of fit index absolute fit index relative fit index and parsimonious fit index 
under absolute fit index chi square chi square by degree of freedom. So, um, absolute fit index relative fit and parsimonious fit index we are discussing about and uh, absolute fit index uh, there are many indices like chi square chi square by degree of freedom goodness of fit index or root mean square residual root mean square um, that is R m A C A C A standard error approximation then relative fit index these are the standard indices available in any lit any literature related to structural equation uh, modeling and uh, most of the why most i think almost all the um, indices are based on chi square value um, so we'll discuss little of this for example absolute fit index what it does is the it is it answers this question is the residual or unexplained variance remaining after model fitting appreciable okay so we do something like this there will be uh, two uh, that uh, hypothesis null and alternate hypothesis null hypothesis is we are saying that sigma equal to sigma theta that actually that what you have estimated that is correct and uh, alternatively you are saying no no they are not correct so then uh, this uh, we will de will define one uh, quantity called chi square which is n minus uh, 1 into f theta that f theta you have seen that the minimization function. So, that value you have by after estimation. So, chi square that n minus 1 f theta this follows chi square distribution with new degrees of freedom where new can be estimated like this p into p plus 1 by 2 minus t that is the number of parameter non redundant elements minus number of parameters to be estimated that is what degree more degree of freedom available here. Okay. And you will find out that the what chi square value you get uh, that should be as small as possible because if, if for perfect fit f theta will be 0 then n minus 1 into f theta that will be 0. So, 0 is the ideal value, but equally uh, it all depends on uh, sample size also n minus n n minus 1. Now, see that you will never get this f theta will be 0, because you are doing the numerical way of um, optimi numerical optimization, where some convergence value will be there. Now, if n is sufficiently large, what will happen this value also will become large. So, what you do want to how do then justify that whether your model is fit or not one way is that this value should be as small as possible and other one is you go by chi square by degree of freedom. So, it is recommended in the literature that essentially the chi square distribution is such that the expected value of chi square nu is nu because that is the degree of freedom because it is a, a this parameter in chi square is, is the degree of freedom only. So, as actually the chi square by degree of freedom should be 1, but it is not recommended uh, what is said that 2 to 5 is the recommended value because of all practical constants. Okay. Now, if you use GFI that is goodness of fit index which is similar to r square in multiple regression, you can you can um, remember or recollect that r square equal to 1 minus S S E by S S T. Now, you see this formulation here the way we have written here that 1 minus trace of this by this. So, this is the total variability and this one is the error error term it is similar to r square and this GFI value varies from 0 to 1 and it is desirable that GFI is greater than 0 0.90. So, mm, and in your model when you develop a measurement model you, the software will give you the uh, GFI value. If you find out that the GFI value is uh, 0.9 or more then it is good it is desirable, but if it is less than 0 0.9 what you will do you will not consider that uh, the your model it all depends on the on the system for which you are developing the model I am telling you even 0 0.8 also you can consider absolutely no problem if you think that uh, the dynamics and is la huge the volatility is more many other issues you have to take into consideration. So, now another index is RMR I think this is something uh, where each of the 
um, value of the S matrix and each of the and corresponding value of the est, uh, estimated matrix that sigma basically you take S then you estimate uh, sigma and by that process in between the parameters are also estimated. Now, the values sigma and S values S this values and sigma estimated this values are there getting me. So, now if you take this and this what is the difference take this this what is the difference you will take this this what is the difference these differences are squared here you see what we have done S j k minus sigma j k this is the estimated one the square by p into p plus 1 that is the non dependent part 2 is given because that is twice of this this by 2 p into p plus min by 2. So, this quantity should be also as low as possible it varies from 0 to 1 and R m r should be less than 0 0.05 and for R m a c a root mean square error approximation this is the modulus of chi square minus its degree of freedom by n minus 1 it is it is seen that 0 0.03 to 0 0.08 in this range is lies and this is this range also says substantial improvement. Okay. Then relative fit index now how well does a particular model do in explaining a set of observed data compared with a range of other possible models here what you do you create nested models several models and then you compare one model with other and then you say which model is better and based on this you create a, a index and that index talks about your model adequacy or other way I can say improvement in terms of model adequacy. Okay. Here most of mostly we consider the null model that is the worst fit model which is known as null model where we think that the covariance matrix is diagonal only diagonal mean variance part is there of diagonal elements are 0. So, now if you say that x chi square for the null model is chi square 0 and chi square for the proposed model is chi square nu where nu is the degrees of freedom then you are in a position to develop uh, or, uh, or I, I can say quantify uh, these indices like no NFI. NFI is chi square 0 minus chi square nu by chi square 0 and e all these indices this values lie between 0 to 1 and it is desirable that they will be greater than 0 0.0 sorry 0 0.90. Then CFI compared to fit index that is 1 minus chi square nu minus nu by chi square 0 minus nu 0 and TLI to curl Lewis index this also in the similar manner you see ultimately they take into consideration the chi square value of the proposed model and a worst fit model which is known as null model and the comparative indices are developed and higher the index value it is better. 0.9 or more is required. Then your parsimony fit index it is similar to adjusted R square R s square in your regression and he it, it basically talks about that power parameter fit power parameter estimates and a g f i here you just see that the up top upper portion or the in the, the, the denominator here it is divided by the degree of freedom and numerator also divided by the degree of freedom what we have done in um, calculating R e square. This value should lie between 0 and 1 and a g f i greater than 0 0.90 is desirable. Then parsimonious norm fit index which is nu my nu 0 n f i and where this is nu is the degree of freedom proposed model and like this. Okay. Now, let us see the goodness of fit indices for the uh, case study and here we some of the fit indices I have given there are others. So, chi square degree of freedom is 99 chi square value is 257.24 if you if you divide by 99 this is almost 100. So, it will be around chi square by degree of freedom is around 2.6. So, it is good because the range is 2 to 5. 
root mean square residual 0 0.06 which is little more than 0 0.05, CFI is 0.98 very good more than 0 0.90, NFI 0.97 more than 0 0.90, C CFI is 0 0.99 and IFI is 0 0.99. So, essentially then chi square is 257.24, chi square by degree of freedom is around 2.6. RMR is 0 0.06, GFI is 0 0.98 like this, this model is very good fit model. Okay. So, now see that uh, who has basically they worked in this, uh, who are the pioneers that Carl Joreskog and Doug Sorbom, Doug I think in, in the year around 1978 probably um, they have developed this, the software first Lisrel came I think in 1989. Uh, and uh, it is a remarkable development in this field and we all are tremendously benefited. And uh, what I can tell you further that uh, for in order to understand the structural equation modeling, I might say that uh, that Joreskog Sarbam this literal aid structural equation modeling with simplex combined language. This man, this uh, manual is very good, and you can go through. And there is a lot of publication by Joeskar and Sarbam. Others is the Hedouk is one person who has written a book, and this and this is a very good book also. In addition, there are many other books uh, available in um, structural equation modeling. So, um, finally, um, let me just summarize um, to my student's lecture. We start, we said that structural equation modeling has two parts one is measurement model measurement model another one is structural model so measurement model is nothing but confirmatory factor analysis structural model is actually path analysis okay now we have discussed details of cfa in terms of its identification what I say that under identification there will be necessary condition, there will be sufficient condition, these two must be satisfied. In necessary condition is known as order condition and this one is known as rank condition, other one sufficient condition is known as rank condition. And in, in this order condition we say the number of parameters to be estimated must be less than number of non redundant elements in the um, covariance matrix. Then, then this is over, over identification case and it is a desirable case. Then we have shown you the estimation parameter estimation. Now, I said that parameter estimation it is basically a function you uh, minimize which is basically log of uh, determinant of sigma plus trace of s sigma inverse minus log of determinant of s minus p and this function is minimized through um, Newton Raphson or, or similar method and uh, then the parameters are estimated and the actually we have sample data in terms of s or r and we have the population value in terms of sigma theta. We try to match these two and using this function the the better the best match is considered and then then you corresponding that theta values these are uh, used now theta is function of many things like lambda like your phi like your theta delta so they, they, these are the theta means theta means so many things are there any any combinations that is what you are trying to estimate because you from correlation matrix to here correlation matrix or covariance to covariance 1 to 1 this correspondence you are doing this is parameter estimation. Once parameters are estimated then you can test the parameter values this lambda using simple t test whether it is significant or not. But apart from this the another important output from this CFA is uh, after parameter estimation is your correlation matrix of the latent correlation or covariance matrix of the latent constructs, which is very very important because this will be the input to the structural model. Then what I, 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 have, I have given you, I have given you the what are the model adequacy test. So, under model adequacy we have seen that absolute test, 
and then your comparative and test or relative test another one is parsimonious absolute is similar to r square r a square where the actual variance explained is considered and comparative case you compare with different models and parsimonious case it is it is basically fit par parameter estimated ok and we finally we have shown you a case study for all of you the case study is there if you are interested please go through Paul P and Maiti J the synergic role of society integral and personal characteristics in minds published in ergonomics in 2008 thank you very much